Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I thought we would retouch an old photo. Um, this picture was taken many, many years ago. And what happened was we have a five by seven in a frame, but somehow it got some water damage. Luckily we had an original picture of this uh, photograph. So all I'm gonna do is touch it up a little bit and give it a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more color. And I think we can do that with a few very simple uh, uh, alterations here with the uh, Photoshop elements in the expert mode. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do, if you've never scanned a picture before uh, with your scanner, then you know you want to be very careful. And a lot of people scan too low of resolution. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that right now. So up here we have the kind, we have a color picture. The colors, we have millions or billions. We're going to do millions. That should be fine. But the resolution where it says 75 DPI, that's just not enough to get the detail of your photograph. So we're going to go, we can go all the way up to 4,800 on this particular scanner. But in my experience, I would say uh, 600, 800, or 1,200 would be the best. We're going to go to 600 DPI. And if you make it a higher resolution, what's going to happen is you're going to have a much greater uh, file size. It's going to be very, very large. Now, uh, where's it going to scan to? I've made it a scanned folder in my pictures folder. So if you see there, it says uh, Jack Pictures Scanned. The reason we want to do that is very simply put is we always know where the pictures end up at. The format says JPEG. We can also do TIFF, PNG, GIF. But we're going to do JPEG. I think JPEG will work just fine. Uh, image uh, correction. I have it set to none. So we no uh, corrections, no descreening, no color restoration on this input because we can let the scanning software do it. But we want to do it in elements. The adaptive lighting. As you see, we have none. And sharpen, we have none. So you can do a lot of this stuff with your scanner based on your scanner software. We're going to do now is we're going to say scan it. So I'm going to hit scan. Please select an area to scan. So we're going to scan this area right here, just a picture. Also be careful with your scanning software. You don't want to scan the whole entire picture. We just want to, we don't want to scan the whole white area. All right, just the picture itself. There we go. It looks pretty good. Hit scan. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to scan this into that folder. It always says the scanner is warming up, even though you've always scanned and scanned and scanned. Um, and if you don't own a scanner, one of the fastest scanners I found is a sheet fed scanner. This is one where you can actually put the, the picture into one end and it will scan it and put it out the other side. So it's just a really nice way to scan. Uh, it's going to scan the document at this point. And also remember, the higher the DPI you get, the longer it takes to scan because that scanning wheel has to move across there at a much slower rate uh, because it's picking up every little detail of your picture, of your photograph. That's why it takes longer at 600, 1200, 1800. It's going to take a really long time uh, to scan some of these images. Uh, once we get this uh, scanned in here, then we're going to go into the editor here. And I'm going to show you around a little bit, just a, a couple ways we're going to, to uh, kind of correct this photograph. Um, if you want to see how I restored old pictures, you can by all means see that. All right. So it's finishing up the scan. There we go. We can minimize our scanning software. And now we're going to open up that picture. So we're going to go to open. And we'll go to our pictures folder, pictures, scanned, and here's our scanned JPEG. And this is the picture that we came up with. Now, there's a couple things I see here. One, there is a ton of red eye in this photograph. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to clean up that red eye. But before we do that, let's do a command or control J, duplicate the background image so we're not working on the original layer. And we're going to get our red eye removal tool. And it works very, very easily. So we're going to blow this up. And what I'm using here is my control key. 
And then we're going to go over some of these eyes here just to clean up some of this red eye. Just like so. And all I'm doing is clicking right on the pupil is where you want to click. And we're going to back back out of here a little bit. Move it around a little bit. I'm just holding my shift key down, moving it around to see if there's anybody else with red eye. Like so. And if it looks a little bit off, you can always do image, undo, red eye tool. Lower this pupil setting down just a little bit here and try it again. All right, the baby's eyes are a little bit red. Again, I don't like red eye in pictures. I try very hard to make sure there is no red eye when I shoot my photos. Uh, but this was taken with an old camera, very old digital camera. Yeah, we're going to try to see if that'll find that red eye. All right, once we do that, then we can just take the picture and drop it back down in there. Now we got the red eye gone, and you can see now their eyes are actually, it looks like they're a little bit really bright. The reason is uh, they're darker because the background is very bright. You can see how much light is on this kid's face right here, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use our adjustment layers. Click on that. The first thing we're going to look at is levels. And we're going to bring down the darkness to make it a little bit darkness. Take a little bit of that darkness out of that picture. I mean, a little bit of that light out of that picture. You can go way down, but we're going to just bring it down a little bit just to make it a little softer. Eh, right about there. The next thing we're going to do, the next adjustment layer we're going to use on this particular picture, I thought, was a little bit of saturation. So click it again. Go to Hue and Saturation. And we're just going to play with our saturation levels just to kind of correct the color a little bit. You can see you get it way too far up there. In old pictures, you always want to bring a little bit of the color up. Let's check out the hue. And then again, the lightness we can play with a little bit more. Just kind of like so. There's a rule of thumb with the brightness bring your brightness up just a little bit so what i mean by that is take it back so we're going to go now we'll say well that's about where we want it but we're going to bring it up a little bit and the reason is i've learned over the years with the experience is when we send these off to be printed what's going to happen is they're going to print darker by nature so as soon as you get it to where you want it adjusted for your lightness or for your exposure bring it up a little bit more so that's our overall exposure the next thing I wanted to do was take this date out of here, this time and date here. We don't want that in there, so we're use our um, we're gonna use our content aware fill tool. So you can see there where the date is actually, you know, going to take over his pant leg there. So you gotta be really, really careful here with that overall. So let's just click on the pant leg again, and we'll go back to the layer. Click on the pant leg. And we'll click on this one. And then we'll just go to the one. Just like so. We're going to do this one here. There we go. So now we have that going. Another thing we might be able to do with this, I would suggest, would be to crop it out a little bit. And we'll just get rid of some of that pant leg there. So let's... uh. Take this to the top of the picture because I still still seems like that pant leg got messed up a little bit there with the with removing that date so we just crop it out there a little bit and there you go now you have an overall um, basic restoration of that picture uh, it's cleaned up a lot and it looks a lot better so now what we're gonna do once we have it all done and all of our uh, settings done all of our layers go to file go to save as and now we're going to save this not as a PSD file. We're going to change this. We're going to save it as a JPEG file. And we're going to save it. We'll save it back to the scan folder. And I'm going to just call this kids. Click save. And we will save it at the quality of 12 because I know we're printing this. Even though we're printing this as a uh, 5 by 7, 
this setting as a 12 here would allow you to print this as large as you really want to make it. So let's just click OK, and that's going to save it out. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little restoration of this picture. Um, so basically all we did was we changed the levels and we added some hue and saturation to it. We removed the date off the bottom of the picture. You can remove really anything in the picture that's distracting that you don't want. And then we just kind of cropped it down a little bit just to um, clean it up just a little bit more. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick restoration and I hope you uh, will re restore some of your old photos. I will say if you have any old photos, a great, great thing to do is to scan these photos. I know it's going to take you a while, but scan them and get them put into a hard drive somewhere. Get them put and get them stuck in a hard drive somewhere and, you know, or save them online to a, a backup service uh, because you don't want to lose those old memories. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please support these videos by using my Amazon link. They can be found at uh, thephotographyguy.net or jackstechcorner.com. Also, look for my Patreon campaign, and I'll put a link with this video. Uh, you can also support me there. Uh, even a dollar a month will go a long way to help produce more videos for you about Photoshop elements. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.